You and I know that engineering is no joke. And whether you're an engineering student or not, the first things that may come to your mind are these when you think of engineering. And there's always this engineer with the helmet, which like 99% of engineers don't wear helmets. Heck, 99% of civil engineers don't even wear helmets. They're probably designing things on their computers. And civil engineering is quite boring anyway. Sorry if you're a civil engineer, but in this channel, we talk more about electrical, electronics, computer, software, AI, virtual reality, radars, antennas, you know, the cooler engineering. When I started learning about these things and about engineering in general, I used to think it's quite hard, but then there was five lessons really that I came along the way that made me realize engineering is actually not that hard. And the first lesson was that it was hard because I thought it was. I know this sounds a little spooky, but as you progress in your journey, you're gonna realize that the software you write in your brain, the beliefs and the frameworks and commands that you basically are putting in here will dictate your reality. And what I mean by that is if you tell yourself engineering is hard, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna suck, you're right. If you tell yourself stupid, not good at math, it's gonna be hard for me, you're right. Whatever you tell yourself, whatever beliefs you inflict upon yourself will actually end up becoming the reality. And this was one of the most important lessons I learned early on is that the stories you tell yourself and the self image you have in accordance to the problem that you're trying to approach and how you view the problem itself that you're trying to solve, that makes all the difference. Because if you think you're not capable and you think engineering is super hard, you're already lost. You're already probably going to fail. But if you look around and see that countless other people have done it, and there's no reason why you cannot if you put in the effort, even if you're not talented, even if you're in the bottom like 10% talent, that just means you need to work a little bit harder to compensate and you can still do it. And even if you're in the bottom 10% talent, telling yourself that you're in the bottom 10% talent is not really going to serve you because you're probably talented in other areas, which can actually help you become more talented. So it is very important to realize that engineering is, is not easy. Sure, it's hard, whatever, but it's doable. And people have done it before. And that's no problem. It's gonna be challenging. It's gonna suck. It's gonna involve a lot of problems. And that's okay. You can do it. And the reason I know you can do it is because countless other people have done it. I don't even need to take a look at you or have a conversation with you to know that you can do it. I just know that countless other people have done it. And to me, that is proof enough. If other humans can do it, you can do it. Now, the second lesson I learned, which was kind of a really nice compliment on the first one, is that you should expect to suck, especially if you don't think you have natural talent or if you have not had any experience, you haven't really practiced engineering, you haven't really solved many problems. It would be unreasonable if you just go in at your first class and just knock all the exercises out of the way and just solve everything very effortlessly. That would be unreasonable. It's gonna take a lot of time and practice and effort and energy, and you will suck. And if you go in with the expectation that you will suck in the beginning, but through the exercises and iterations and the learning, you will get better. That is, in my opinion, the best mindset to have where you tell yourself, I can do it. I'm capable. Other people have done it, which means I can do it. I'm probably not going to be great in the beginning, but that's okay. I'm just going to push through until I practice enough until I get to that great stage. I think that set of beliefs and frameworks will serve you really well. And the other advantage of accepting that you're going to suck in the beginning is that you remove all judgment from yourself, where if you get a problem wrong, that's okay. It would be unreasonable if I get it right the first time. I'm seeing this for the first time. And really what we're trying to do here is we're trying to remove the emotional attachment to good outcomes and we're trying to just knock that out of the way, put that aside. And then all we're trying to do is just approach the problems, solve them and think really hard about them and then move on to the next problem and do the same. And because it is only through solving the problems and thinking about them deeply, getting stuck, asking for help and going through that iteration process over and over and over again, that's how improvement takes place. Which brings me to the third point that I want to talk to you about, which made me realize engineering could be really easy or hard. And engineering was very hard when I was trying to do everything on my own. This is a reality in engineering. It's probably the same in any major or anything in, in life really. The lone wolf is not cool. The lone wolf gets crushed because if you try to do everything on your own, there's a group of five or 10 people that are studying together and they're teaching things to each other and they're bouncing ideas and the sheer act of like doing things together is making them even more motivated. So it is an important task and skill to develop, to learn how to go make friends and work with other people and find other people who have the same problems as you, struggling with the same things and form groups and form masterminds and study together and learn from each other. Because if you don't do that, you're missing out on on one of the easiest ways to learn much faster and make the process a lot more fun. Because think about it, even if you're introverted, even if you say, I don't like people, anything you do on your own for very long periods of time, after a while, it's just lonely. Especially if it sucks, like the beginning stage of your engineering classes, it's gonna feel even more lonely. And the only thing that helped me get through some classes is the sheer fact that some of my other friends in class were also there in the trenches with me. And we all agreed that this sucks. And we all agreed that, okay, let's just meet on Tuesday at 7 p.m. at the library or whatever, or online or like and just knock it out of the way together and bounce ideas together and whatnot that's gonna be extremely important but that brings us to the opposite side of that spectrum which is the point number four that i learned which can make engineering way easier and that is if you can just sit, sit down and focus and concentrate and not get interrupted and not have your thoughts be taken left and right and check your phone and do all that you're ahead of 99 percent of people especially people nowadays they can't go like 10 minutes or 20 minutes without checking their phones or checking instagram or tiktok or whatever if you can teach yourself how to not do that you are 
far ahead of 99% of the students. And that is because engineering problems are hard. Engineering sets are hard. They will require concentration for longer than five minutes sometimes. They're gonna require you just sit down and focus for long periods of time. And if you don't train yourself to be able to do that, things are gonna get really, really hard because you're just not gonna have spent enough time thinking and focusing on the problem to actually understand how to solve it and adopt thinking frameworks. That's why I only check Instagram once a week from my laptop usually on Saturdays. I'm not on TikTok. I have an account, but I don't use it. I think I deleted the app a long time ago. I don't use Snapchat. I don't use Facebook. Um, I use Twitter like once or twice a day, but mainly because it's like about ideas and it's about thoughts. But overall, my social media consumption and the time spent on my phone is, is very minimal. And that's because I want to spend my time either doing productive work, learning about engineering problems or, or business or things that actually interest me or spending time with people I actually enjoy or talking to people that I actually enjoy talking to, whether it be like through FaceTime or whatnot or like texting. And again, I'm not saying be antisocial. I'm not saying completely disappear off the grid. But one very simple thing you can do is just turn notifications on from all social media apps and just like remove them from the main screen of your phone. And ideally put your phone away whenever you try to do work. These very simple things, you probably heard them a million times, but there's a reason they've been said a million times because that is the only cure. They work. So if you really want to make engineering less hard than it already is, develop the habit of being able to focus and concentrate for long periods of time. And that's going to make the problems a lot more fun. Now, the fifth thing I learned about engineering, which made it a lot less hard and a lot easier and that you have to use the scientific method and how you approach problems in engineering, but also in personal life and career. And I actually made an entire video about this. I made a whole presentation when I was at Xavier University and it's so good. It's like 40 minutes, but it's pretty much like a mini course on how to like use the scientific method and think and make decisions in your everyday life in engineering and outside of engineering. And I would strongly urge you to watch it. It is only 40 minutes. And if you watch this, you will become a superstar. No doubt. It'll put you like five years ahead of everyone because I basically take all the knowledge I have learned across the years and put in a short presentation. It should be over here. If not, I'll put it somewhere in the description. So I'll see you there.